So a couple other advanced um, techniques that you need to think about when you're using RStudio. Um, one is, right, this file right here is just a regular R script. If we look at um, Finder where I saved the thing, um, if we open up a new Finder window, I just saved it in this in my main um, home directory. There's this file called example.r. If you look here, it just like that's the only thing in the file. It's just a plain text file. Um, it's you can move it to any other computer and have that run. Um, but what we're going to be using in this class and what you're going to be working through, or what you potentially already worked through in your exercises and lessons for today, is R Markdown. Um, instead of using this R script. So here, everything is uh, is R code. Um, if you want to, to add your own text about something and say like, this makes a number equal five, R is gonna treat all of this as text and it's gonna yell at you because it says makes is not a function, number is not a function, it doesn't know what to do with that. And so what we can do is if we add a comment um, or this pound sign, the the hashtag in front of it, that will make it so that this is a comment and it's not actually code, it's not going to run. And so what we can do is move this um, after the comment here. And so now we can say like, this is gonna make a number be five and there's the actual making it be five thing. So that's one way to mix text with code here in a regular R file. In R markdown, which you'll be using for this class, if we go to file, new file, R markdown, and then I typically just hit OK. Um, and then I select all of this placeholder text and delete it. So here we have kind of the front matter here. So this is the title of the document. And then here's my name. The date doesn't matter, so we'll just get rid of that. So with an R Markdown document, you have three sections. You have this top section that's the metadata that tells R what to, like the title, the author, other details about the document. You have just regular text here. So if I type something and say this is text, it's not going to yell at me. It doesn't think that this is a function. It doesn't think that this is a number that I'm trying to run. This is just text that I have typed. And so when you're writing your reflections, this is where you would say, I thought the readings were awesome. And that's just regular text that you're typing. Um, because this is Markdown, as you read um, in the, the readings and the lessons for today, we can add a heading with this, this pound sign here. This is our first level heading, so we can say this is the reflection. And if we come down here, this is going to be some code stuff. And so right now, we just have regular text um, with no code in it. There's no R here whatsoever. Um, if we want to add the R stuff to it and make it so that there's R code embedded in our document, then we can either use this green button or this green menu here and insert an R chunk. And it'll insert kind of this, this fenced area here with these triple back ticks. Or if you press Control or Command, Option or Alt I, it'll do that for you and create a, a chunk. And so now anything that we type inside this chunk, this gray area, will be R code. And so we can make something called my neat thing is gonna be 15. Um, we can either run this by pressing Control or Command Enter, and it'll send that line down. Or you can run everything inside the chunk if you have multiple lines, if you click on this play button for the chunk. And so if I click on that, it's going to run everything in that one chunk all at once. Um, and so then it's showing up here and you can see stuff. Um, one tricky thing that often happens is if you accidentally delete one of these triple back ticks, it will mess up the rest of your document and it'll sometimes get rid of the play button um, and it'll start treating all of these things. Any text that comes after, it's gonna think that that's our code. So if your document's ever behaving strangely, um, make sure that all of your chunks start with, tr with three triple back ticks or with a triple back tick, um, ends with a triple back tick and then there you don't have anything extra after it because um, that's gonna mess up the formatting. Um, if we want to compile this document, let's go ahead and save it as test. So if I click on this knit button, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and run all of the R code, and then it's going to convert the whole document into an HTML file, which will look something like this. So we have the title of our document, we have the reflection with the text that we have, and then we have code. 
So right here, we made a thing called my neat thing, and it's 15. Um, we didn't do anything with it. We're not showing the value of it. We're not plotting it. We just made a thing and set it to 15, and that's all we did. Um, if we want to plot it, plot a single number, that's exciting. Uh, we can say plot, or not 15, we're going to plot my neat thing. And if we hit play right here, we can see what it's going to look like. It's going to plot a dot at 15. Neat. Um, if we knit this thing now, it will show. It's going to go through and compile everything. So there is the code that generates the plot, and there's the plot itself right in our document, which is pretty neat. Um, so a couple things to pay attention to, though, with the environment here. Notice how we have two things in the environment. We have my cool number and we have my neat thing. And if we knit and we use my neat thing, it will plot and it will look great. If we come and add another chunk here, and we want to plot my cool number, because we have it, we know that it's equal to five. If I knit this, it's actually not going to work. It's going to complain that object my cool number is not found. So when you knit something, what ends up happening is R starts with a brand new environment with nothing in it. So if you if you were working with different R scripts on your on your computer in this session here, and you created something called my cool number, it exists here. It's in the environment panel. But when you knit. R cannot see what's in the environment panel. It only sees what it creates. And so if you want to use my cool number, you need to have it be explicitly in here and say my cool number is equal to five. Now it will knit because, again, it's starting from a brand new empty R session and it's going to work its way down and run this chunk and then run this chunk and then run all of the other chunks. And so if you're using something that doesn't exist, even if it shows up over in the environment panel, if it doesn't exist in the document and wasn't created in the document, then it's not going to work. So now if we knit it, we should get a plot at five because my cool number exists now because we've created it. And there it is. So we have my cool number is five and we plot it at five. We have my neat thing is 15 and we plot it at 15 and it all works. Um, so this brings us to the last point that we're going to cover with this RStudio tour that we have here. Um, and that is the idea of what do you actually care about saving? Um, because eventually you're going to have to close RStudio. And when you close it initially, it will ask you if you want to save your workspace. And the natural human reaction is to say, yes, you want to save the workspace because you've been working on all of this stuff. You don't want to lose anything. What the workspace really is, it's this environment panel. And so if you tell it to save the workspace, it will remember that my cool number is five, it will remember that my neat thing is 15, and then it'll close R. And then when you open it back up again, it will load these, um, these temporary values back in automatically for you, um, which is kind of convenient, but it's also potentially dangerous because you could be working on a script and messing with different numbers and you broke something. And now if, if it equals five, it doesn't run or something. Um, if you close R and come back, it's going to put that broken wrong number back in. Um, also, you might run into a situation where you made something and you don't need it anymore, but it's hanging around in your values there. Um, and so what you actually don't need to remember to save is the environment panel. This will disappear and get recreated all the time. So if you have something in here, it's okay for it to disappear and to be deleted. What is most important is the stuff that you type in your R Markdown file or in any R scripts. This is the stuff that generates the things that go in the environment panel. Um, and so what you generally want to do in RStudio to kind of take away the safety net here, um, because it can mess you up um, severely if you don't take away the safety net, is if you go to Tools, in RStudio and go to Global Options, you can tell RStudio to not save that workspace. And so if you uncheck this box here that says restore our data into workspace at startup, uncheck that so it won't bring anything from previous sessions. And then if you switch this, um, this option here, this is where it asks you if you want to 
um, save your workspace. If you set it to never, then it's not going to ask you and it's not going to tempt you to save your previous environment. So right now, if I come, because I have those, those settings there, so it's not going to remember the environment, if I come to session and then click on restart R, it's going to give me a brand new R session and I have nothing anymore. All right, I don't have anything anymore. I have um, no objects in the environment. So my cool number doesn't exist anymore. My neat thing doesn't exist anymore. Um, I can recreate them if I come here and click on the play button and come click on this play button. Now they exist again, I've recreated them. Um, the code is what generates the stuff that goes in the environment. Um, Often, a good strategy is as you're going, sometimes it's helpful to just restart your R session and make sure everything is running correctly and that you didn't have anything messed up. Another way of testing that is knitting because knitting essentially does the same thing. It starts you with a brand new empty environment and then when you click on knit, um, it starts running all of the, all of the code chunks sequentially. Um, if you have a longer R Markdown document, so you have a whole bunch of stuff up at the top where you're loading data and you're manipulating it and you're using mutate and group by and summarize and cleaning up the data, and then down below you make your plots, you might close R um, one day and then come back the next day. When you open it, you won't have the environment. So you could come up to the top and start running each of the code chunks manually, but that's going to get really tedious. So one thing you can do is if you come down to the chunk where you're working, and instead of clicking on the play button, you click on this button right next to it. This will run all of the chunks up above in the document up until this one. So if I click here, it's going to run the chunk that was up before that created my cool number. And so now I'm ready to go with this chunk. And so if anything was created up, up above, like loading a new data set or manipulating data, now I can do stuff down here with all of that stuff. So again, the stuff that you care about the most, the things that you need to save, are these files here. Don't worry so much about what's in the environment. Every time you restart R, that gets wiped out, and that's good practice. You want to make sure every time you run your scripts, it's generating all of the data that you need and generating all of the analysis. If you're running models, it's going to run the models again. If you're making plots, it's going to build all of the plots again. And that's, that's kind of the best practice for doing this here. So that is our... Um, whirlwind introduction to RStudio. You'll get a lot more experience with it as you work on the exercises and as you work on your projects and um, work through the different lessons and you should get fairly familiar with it pretty quickly.